Welcome to Thursday, day number four of our Bible Fun Week, this half term in October. And um, we're gonna we're talking about Daniel, and Daniel never gave up on God. So we're gonna start off by singing ne- Do Not Give Up. The do song. <laughs>
shed full of motorbikes and they're old and they're antique and they're probably worth a lot of money some of these are 50 years old 40 years old 30 years old look at this one for example this is an old road racer a Norton some of these bikes are very very old older than you and even far older than me this is like a scrambler or a trials bike you can often tell by the tires the type of racing or what it's for if it's smooth it's for the road or if it's rough it's for the fields and this collector has got dozens maybe up to 50 motorbikes and you can see how old some of them are by the registration the color of them the shape <clears throat> the size of them I don't know much about motorbikes to be honest 
but I'm thrilled to see so many shapes and sizes of motorbikes and even some of the old racers. Look at number 12, <clears throat> it has the old um, certificates on it and then you've got road racers, you've got trials bike, you've got all sorts of bikes. Lots and lots of older bikes, there's Tritons, there's Nortons, there's Hondas, uh, really old and you've got trials bikes. I'm not really thinking of a trial, it's a different shape and size of a bike uh, with a good suspension on it. And we can be challenged about the trials of life, even on a motorbike, a trials motorbike or a scrambler racer. We think of the trials and the trials of life. All of us go through trials and go through struggles. And that's why for me, the Bible's so important. God's so important. Because whenever I go through trials and big challenges, like when a trials biker is going over courses and over jumps, it needs to be strong, it needs to be tight, it needs to be secure, it needs to be well oiled. And for me to go through life, and when a trials come my, my way, then God is there with me to help me to go through trials. If God's not with me, I can't expect him to help me go through these trials. And not only is there, is there trials bikes, there's racing bikes. Look at this one here. I like the racing bikes. This is a 900 Honda. And it's a really, really fast machine. It's got a big tank of fuel. It's got so much power. And whenever I think of a racing bike, well then it reminds me of the race of life. And the Bible even talks about running the race and running the race with patience. Because if you take off too quickly, and if you run out of fuel, you're out of the race. So you need to stop and make sure you're well topped up with fuel. Every time you can run a corner, if the ground's wet or if the ground's windy, or if the other riders are getting too close, you have to be so careful and so focused and pace your race well. And every time the racer is racing, his focus is not so much on the lap or the race. His focus is the finish line. And a lovely verse that I like, it says, looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So I'm going to put my Christ on. I wonder if I can get on this bike. Put my, put my Christ on. Throw the leg over like this here. So the hamlet is so important for a road racer to go on to the road race or any rider. It's so important to have a hamlet. I lived in Jamaica for a year and the riders there or some parts of the world they don't use a price hamlet and that's foolishness because the rider must protect his head at all costs. If he falls off a motorbike on a race and he hits his head it will probably kill him so the hamlet is to protect his head. That reminds me the Bible talks about the armour of God and the, the, the rider has full gear. His hands are protected, his feet are protected, his legs, his body, and his hands, his head. And that reminds me of life. We have to protect every part of our body against the attacks or against falling. For example, our hands touching the wrong things, tempted to steal. We need to have gloves on to protect us. The gloves as in God will help us in our lives to stop us stealing, for example. We have to have the helmet of salvation so we know if anything happens to us in the race, if we fall, whenever God's with us but the hamlet protects the head and there's so many things come into our head boys and girls as life goes on especially with telephones there's so much comes into a phone that's not good for your eyes it's not good for your ears and ultimately it's not good for your head because when things go into your head they're not good for you it affects your whole body and it affects your life so the hamlet is to protect the head and the Bible talks about the hamlet of salvation and how God wants to protect us. But if you don't know God and you don't want God to be part of your life, he doesn't protect you. He doesn't even know you because he says, I know them who know me, who call upon me. And the Bible says, call upon the name of the Lord. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus shall be saved. So whenever you think of these bikes, so many bikes, and some of them are very, very old, they're built for the purpose of enjoyment. And God wants us to enjoy life. That's why he made us to love life. And I enjoy life to the fullest. To the, to the fullest. But don't like things hinder your life or spoil your life or ruin your life. Whenever the racer is riding his bike, he must be protected. 
His machine must have plenty of oil in it, and the oil reminds me of God, the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit wants to flow through the Christian and wants us to enjoy. Nehemiah in the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And a rider, when he's a motorbike and he sees a good day, he wants to put on his helmet, put on his gear, and he wants to ride up into the sunset and enjoy his motorbike. So whenever you think of a motorbike, think of the wonderful lessons we can enjoy about God. And remember the important lessons whenever you're out riding a bike. Whether it's a bicycle or a motorbike, be careful and make sure you know the highway code. Did you enjoy that? Those motorbikes are very, very, very old. Older than all of you and some of them even older than me. Yes! Right, we're talking about Daniel this week. So let's sing the song Dare to be a Daniel. as we come to this very interesting and exciting part of the narrative of Daniel. Father, we thank you for Bible Club Bible Fun Week this week, Thursday. We pray now, Lord, you'll help me to tell the story, help the boys and girls as they listen, and teach us from your word, we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're going to talk about the handwriting on the wall. In the book of Daniel, you might think, Daniel, oh, I can't read that. It's amazing how challenging and encouraging it is for children to read all about the life of Daniel. So if you've been watching Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, we're covering Daniel's uh, story. And uh, just to recap, Daniel is taken from Jerusalem with his three friends, many other young people. And he comes to the king of Babylon, King Nebuchadnezzar, and he refuses the king's meat and the king's wine. It causes a problem, but God is going to really use Daniel and bless Daniel to help the king. So Daniel, the Bible says, he's a wonderful character. He understands science. He's an absolutely brilliant mind. And with these four young men, you can hardly find fault with them. They really love God and they were going to stand against God, even if it meant them dying for their faith. And they were brought before the king. And the king asked them, why did you not eat my meat and drink my wine? And Daniel, of course, said, because we pray to God. And God says, we are not to take meat that's offered to idols or to drink your wine. We do not need wine or alcohol because um, it, the Bible says it's, it, it's a mocker. Strong drink is raging. If you take it, you're not wise. And Daniel says, we love God. We do not need to drink alcohol or eat the king's meat. And Daniel said, we'll do anything for you, we'll write your laws, we'll obey you, we'll respect you, we'll honour you, but we will not worship you. We only worship God in heaven and we only pray to God in heaven. And both these things were going to challenge Daniel greatly. 
to see what he would do. Now Daniel the king had wise men, older wise men. They were like magicians, astrologers, all these people. But Daniel was able to outshine every one of them. As we will see, this is Daniel's secret and his three friends. They had a personal relationship with God, just like I enjoy today, like any one of you can enjoy. If you put your trust in the Lord Jesus and ask him to forgive you and to save you and to make Daniel's God your God, then you can uh, do, be like Daniel, the Bible says, and do great exploits for God. Wonderful life is a Christian life. And then, of course, we talked about the, the king having a dream and he dreamt of it this big. He didn't even know what the dream could remember. The old wise men had no idea what it was, but Daniel told them it was like a big iron uh, statue, 90 feet tall. And of course, it was divided up into parts and there was a rock that came and knocked it into pieces. And Daniel was able to explain how the gold part represented Babylon, the head, that was the present time. King Nebuchadnezzar, the wealthiest king in the world, he controlled the world with his power and influence and money. And then, of course, the, the second stage, the breast coat and the arms was the media Persia. Then the next bit, the bronze, the belly and the thighs was like the Grecian Empire. Then the Roman Empire were the iron legs and the clay. Then, of course, Jesus represented the Rock of Ages. And eventually, one day, no one knows when, but one day, Jesus will come and crush. Uh, the, and the Rock will crush and bring all the empires to get to, to praise and to think and to realize in the same. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. And of course, the king, what did he do? That he built a big golden image of himself. He thought, I want everyone to worship me. I want to be just like God. And he done it with his own money, with his own 90 feet tall, 9 feet wide, huge um, outside the city of Babylon, for people could see it for miles and miles. He invited dignitaries from all over the world to come to worship him, to see his idol. And whenever the music sounded, everyone had to bow down and worship the king. But three men never. These three men were Daniel's friends. And they refused to bow down. And because they were, they said they would never bow down. And this was reminded us of the gold, the big image. And the rock would be Jesus. It would fall and crush it. And it would fall. And all these stages in history have come to pass or will come to pass. Remember the Babylonian Empire? That's the Nebuchadnezzar's time. And we're going to find out of the media Persian Empire. It's going to happen today. And all these have or will come to pass. And until the Lord Jesus comes back again. Wonderful how Daniel, Daniel was prophetic. He was able to have visions, the Bible says, and tell him, tell him, explain to the king exactly what this represented and meant. So Daniel was an absolutely, not only was he brilliant, humanly speaking, to understand laws, to understand science, but he also had the mind of God. God could tell him exactly what the king's dream was, even though the king didn't even know himself. And then we, we talked yesterday about Daniel's friends because they refused to bow down to the, to the image, the golden statue of the king that were thrown into the fire. They refused to bow down. The king turned it up seven times hotter and they were thrown in and they got so close to the Bible says the soldiers melted because of the heat and the king was astonished. He said, did we not throw three men into the fire? How come there's four and he said, it is a likeness to the Son of God. Wonderful how the Lord Jesus came. The ropes and the men burnt, but they could walk around in the fire. They should have melted like water, but they didn't. They were able to walk around because the Lord Jesus came to protect him. And now they were in the fire and they just walked around. They talked and there was a presence of God with them because they took a stand. They honoured the Lord and the Lord blessed them and protected them and kept them alive. As a result, the king said, get them out of there. And he said, Daniel's God is a true God of heaven. And everyone is free to worship Daniel's God. And no one speak against Daniel's God or you will be put to death and your house will be burned with fire. It's amazing. How because of the stand of Daniel's friends to love God, to stay true to him, everything turned around. And all the dignities, and they went home to their countries, to their homes. And instead of talking about the king's God, they talked about the king of kings, Daniel's God. And the Lord Jesus was, was uplifted and glorified that day, as was God in heaven. Now, there's going to be a problem now because the king... 
even though he has dreams and he, one night he couldn't, he's outstanding and he's having a big, see he had his big empire, his palace and the river, the great river Euphrates would flow through his palace into his gardens and he had the most beautiful palace, the most beautiful gardens in all the world and it, it cost so much money and eventually this got to his head and he thought whoa I am so powerful I am so mighty I am so wealthy I am just like God and you know something boys and girls he had another dream and this tribe he remembered his dream but he did not know what he meant and no one could tell him his dream the old wise men were wise yes but they could not interpret his dream only Daniel could do that because God could help him and whenever the king told Daniel what his dream was, Daniel was afraid and he did not want to tell the king. But the king says, Daniel, tell me what it meant. And Daniel, the king, told him he had a dream. There was a big tree. And this tree was the biggest tree in the world. In fact, the tree, the branches stretched out across the whole world. And the birds could, 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 could land in it. They could have nests in it. And the, it was full of food and full of fruit trees. And underneath it was all the animals. But he said, suddenly, while this was beautiful, it was all happening. Suddenly an angel came down from heaven. And the angel said, cut down the tree. But just leave the stump at the bottom. That at the root, just cut it off at the root and let it fall down. And the king was really troubled by this dream. And he says, Daniel, what does this dream mean? And Daniel knew exactly what it meant. And he had to tell the king. And Daniel said to the king, King Nebuchadnezzar, this tree represents you. Because you have power and influence over all the world. You have enough money to feed the world, to protect the birds, to protect the animals. And he was all pleased, yes. And he said, why was it cut down? He says, Nebuchadnezzar, because you are going to be cut down. All your empire is going to be taken from you. In fact, just like you're cut down, you are going to lose your mind. And like these animals, you are going to live like the animals for seven years until you get your mind back. And uh, then you are going to acknowledge that God in heaven is the one true and living God. God is going to cut you down until you realize who God in heaven really is. And boys and girls, Daniel almost, for, the, Daniel then said to the king, this is so fearful. The king just stared into space and would not be spoken to. And Daniel said, but king, it doesn't have to happen. If you pray to God and ask him to forgive you of all your pride and all your sin and ask him to save you and become a believer in God, it doesn't have to happen. But the king didn't want to do that. He loved his power and he loved his pride and he loved everything he had. And he wasn't willing to give it up. He loved his sinful way. Do something about a year past. And suddenly the king, he started to become, he behaved very strangely. He started to eat grass. He started to be violent like a wild animal until nobody could help him. Nobody could be around him. Nobody could be with him. And it left him and off he goes into the forest, into the fields, into the mountains. And nobody could go near him. He was so dangerous. And his hair began to grow and his nails began to grow and he just lived like an animal. He wasn't clean anymore. He began to speak like the animals, move like the animals, eat the grass like the animals, crawl like the animals. Whenever it was raining, he would just stay out in the rain. He didn't care. His mind was completely gone. Boys and girls, it's so nice to have a, a mind that works, a mind that thinks. It's called sanity. To be able to wake up in the morning and to reason with yourself without being mad. This is what happened. King Nebuchadnezzar, the most powerful man in the world, becomes like an animal, eats like an animal, sleeps like an animal. One week after week after week after month after month, year after year, he was just like a wild animal living among the oxen, among the cattle, among the dogs and the bears and the wolves. He was just like an animal. Nobody can come near to help him and eat grass. His nails were getting long. He was dirty and filthy and his hair became all shaggy and tangled and tattered. He was desperate. Even the cattle probably wondered, what sort of an animal is that? Seven years living like an animal until, do you know what happened? 
The Bible says after seven years, after living like an animal, his nails becoming long like this and full of terror. Do you know what happened? Suddenly, he realized, he stood up and he said, God, ye are the God in heaven. I submit my life to you. Forgive me for being an animal, for being a sinner. And I want to change and I want you to help me because I cannot help myself. And just like that, he was brought in, washed up, cleaned up, nails cut, hair tidied up. And you know, for all those seven years, he was not replaced. His son didn't come to take his place because Daniel said he's coming back. And Daniel was able to keep the king's place for him. King Nebuchadnezzar was one of the most proud kings ever to live. A terrible man who done terrible things. But I believe after seven years living like an animal, he acknowledged the one true God in heaven and God heard his cry and God saved him. But you know what happened to his son? His son then became, a, after Nebuchadnezzar died, his son came on the throne. But his son was not a nice man. He forgot all about God. He didn't care about God. Even though he saw the change in his father's life, he never became a Christian. He never became a believer in God. And boys and girls, we can have Christian parents, Christian grandparents. That does not make us a Christian. Learn from this man. He sort of learned from his father, but he didn't. He just continued the way his father used to be. And one night he was out, and you know what he done? He had a big party. He was celebrating being the king. And he brought all the dignities from all over the world and invited a thousand plus guests. And he filled this big banqueting hall. And he said, go to the... Wherever, whenever my father captured the temple in Jerusalem and bring the lovely cups that we could drink wine with, they were used only to worship God in heaven. But boys and girls, he mocked God. And he said, let's drink, let's celebrate today. And as he's celebrating, suddenly there was silence in the room because a human finger, a hand, appeared from nowhere and started to write on the wall started to write on the wall and I said these words, Meany, meany, tackle up Harzen. Meany, meany, tackle up Harzen. You can read this in the Bible in Daniel chapter 5. And the king was afraid and he said, what do these words mean? And none of the wise men could, could help him. And he called for Daniel. And Daniel was able to go and interpret before the king and explain exactly what the words meant. Do you know what the words mean? You read about it in Daniel chapter 5. It says, and this is the writing on the wall. Meany, meany, tickle up harshen. This is the interpretation of the thing. Meany, God have numbered thy kingdom and finished it. You're finished. You may just be the king, but tonight your kingdom is finished. And then he said, tickle, tickle. Thou art weighed in the balances and art found wanting. Perry's. Thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and Persians. That night, little did he realize, as the king sat down, the king contemplated what was going to happen. Do you know what happened that night? As the king looked at the writing on the wall, realized his days was to come. He's been found wanting. He's guilty of mocking God, guilty of being a terrible, terrible king. And because of his mocking, little did he realize while he's trying to protect the kingdom of Babylon, there's a great river Euphrates flowing. And because of the brilliant craftsmanship, the river flowed underneath the, underneath the city to give the gardens water. And little did he realize while he's celebrating, his enemy is blocking the river. And when the river dried up, they were coming underneath the city. He expected them to try it over the walls, around the walls, but he never expected them to come under the walls. Suddenly, it says the fingers of a human hand appeared and wrote in the plaster of the wall, near to the lampstand, the royal palace. The king watched as the hand, the hand as it wrote. And they were shocked, they couldn't believe it. They stopped drinking, they stopped eating, they stopped celebrating, they stopped talking. And as they're mocking God, eating, drinking, being merry, little they realize that night he was like a fool and his soul was going to be required of him. Let's read it out here, for example. This king, the king Nebuchadnezzar's son, is called King Belshazzar. In a big feast, invited a thousand of his powerful friends. He asked the servants to bring in the gold and silver cups. The cups had been taken from God's temple and Jerusalem. 
All the people drank from the stolen cups and praised their false gods, mocking God, idolaters called. Suddenly, a hand appeared and wrote on the palace wall. The king could do nothing but stare. His knees began to knock and shake together. Nobody could read the writing. So he asked the wisest people to read it. They couldn't understand it. So he brings in Daniel to interpret the writing in the wall. More or less saying, King, tonight you're found guilty, and tonight you're going to die. You know, boys and girls, you never think anything like this is going to happen, but God is watching down, and God is going to end his empire just like that. It simply means you have been weighed in the balances and found wanting. In other words, you're found guilty before God. The wrath of God. The anger of God. We love to talk about the love of God. And God is a God of love, but he's also a God of anger. A God of wrath. wrath, And he hates to be mocked and hates idolatry. People worshipping false gods. And that night, boys and girls, while he's celebrating, the enemy's coming. The enemy's coming underneath the Medes and the Persians are coming underneath in the shallow riverbed underneath the city and you know what they're going to do you know what happened to the king that night they come underneath the city while they're celebrating while they were drunk the enemy attacked him and killed the king and the king that night king belshazzar died that very night he was celebrating and the meat and the persians were able to overtake and overcome the city of uh, babylon see the circumstance Babylon, that was in Nebuchadnezzar's time. The Medes and Persians, they have now come in Belshazzar's time. And then history will teach us about the Grecian Empire, the Roman Empire. And we're just waiting for the Lord Jesus to come back again. Wonderful history lesson. And then the, this new king, um, Jarius, he's a new king. He's come across. He sits on the throne. He keeps the wise men. He keeps Daniel. He hears all about Daniel. Bring this brilliant young man. He's now much older, maybe 85 years old now. And he keeps Daniel. But the wise men came to him and said, Do you know there's a people and they don't really like you. They don't worship you. And they only worship another God. And they said, You should write a letter and teach everyone. They must respect you. They must honor you. They must obey you. And if they don't, you should throw them into the den of lions. Boys and girls, they wrote. They wrote the letter and the king signed it. Who was found guilty of praying? Praying to his God. They tricked the king, even though the king really liked Daniel, got to know Daniel, trusted Daniel. But he thought maybe Daniel was part of this plan and Daniel knew nothing about it. And as a result, boys and girls, because Daniel prayed, do you know what happened when you disobeyed the king in these times? You were thrown into the den of lions. And Daniel was tied up and they brought before the king. The king could do nothing, even though he loved Daniel. And Daniel was cast into the hungry man-eating lions just for loving God, just for singing to God, just for praying to God, for advising the king for all those years. And now he's going to get gobbled up by lions, hungry lions. Or is he? Do you think God's going to allow lions to eat Daniel? Does God have the power to stop, to shut the lions' mouths? Do you want to know what happened? We'll tell you tomorrow. Yes. Ha! Brilliant story. I like that one there. Now let's do a quiz. What is a quiz today? Oh, this is interesting. Pencil case. Even though you might be off school for this week and next week, don't forget your pencil case because you need to know what's in it. Right, girls? How many kings do we talk about in the story so far? There's a father, the son, and a new king. How many is that? Three kings. What do you want? Uh, is that a protector? Five? Yes? Thirty for the girls. Boys, who can tell me... Uh, yes, who can tell me the, what happened to a person who prayed to God that was thrown into the den of bears, the den of monkeys, or the den of lions? The den of lions, yes? Uh, crayons for the boys. What's it worth? 150! Yes. Girls, how tall was a big, 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 big statue? How many feet? 90 feet tall. What do you want? My notepad. Okay. 40. Good boys. Remember we told you about the king? What did he do? What did he take from the temple? That was she never have done to mock God to drink with cups and, and um, cups and uh, 
plates and things like that used to worship God, that's right. What do you want? A rubber! 20. Boys are still winning. Way out there. Girls, we told you about uh, the enemy. Did the enemy come over the wall, through the windows, or underneath in the river? Underneath in the river, that's right. Number one. Come on, girls, give the good one. 50. Uh, good. Boys, who can tell me the enemy? Or the, the golden statue, or big, the big statue. What happened to the men who refused to bow down and worship? They were thrown into the fairy furnace. That's right. Paintbrush and pencils. Ha! Huh. Boys, this is what you would call easy. Just send to the girls. Just letting you know, boys. But you know that. Girls? Mm. Last question. Daniel loved to do two things. What were they? Worship God and... Pray to God. Wonderful. Pen. 50 to 170 for the girls. And uh, boys, you've got 170. So you've got 270. Ha 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 ha. Just saying, you've already won. Ha ha ha. Sorry, it might be a big, big, big minus one, but I doubt it. Boys, who can tell me, dare to be a Daniel, dare to stand alone. Who did God, Daniel love more than anything else in the world that was never going to change because he knew he was with God. He loved God more than anything. That's a real challenge. You know what we're going to do? We're going to give both these to the girls. Yes? Because you've already won, boys. The girls? Oh, no. Two. <laughs> Three hundred. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Two is on that. Sorry, boys. Okay, boys officially won, and girls got more numbers at the end. Well done, girls. Right, we're going to finish with one song, and then we're going to have a final quiz tomorrow. I think that's 2-2. Two, two. So the final's going to be tomorrow. Whoever wins that gets the next two days off school after tomorrow, okay? Or the next 9, 10, 11 days. The Butterfly Song. Remember that one? If I were a butterfly, let the
for making me me. Wonderful. Okay, just to remind you what's happening with the, the competition. Bible Club all this week finished tomorrow. For this week, then next week we're back on again. 9 o'clock onwards every morning. Uh, now, uh, the competition yesterday for tomorrow finishes today at 4 o'clock. It can be anything beside, to do with a story. You can take a photograph beside a fire or handwriting, maybe a Bible verse, something with a Bible club, etc. Or be a lion, act a lion, draw a lion, dress up like a lion, anything. You can do any of these or all of these beside a fire, handwriting, be a lion. Or we're going to show these all the well tomorrow. Lots in already, but if you haven't sent them in, you want to send them in by four o'clock today. Okay, the word you send it to you, email biblefunweek at gmail.com, message or hope for youth ministries, or the WhatsApp 07880 That's all for today. It's been a lovely time. I'm really enjoying learning with Daniel and singing these lovely songs. It's a blessing, and we trust you're blessed as well. Close eyes, let's pray. Father, thank you for the story of Daniel. Thank you, Lord, for all the boys and girls watching it, even with their jammies on, it doesn't matter. Help us to learn and to sing and praise the lovely name of Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. See you. Right.